So Sharon Armstrong goes looking for ways to educate the public about how to keep themselves safe from online scammers. Sharon Armstrong is determined to make amends for being entrapped in a dating scam and imprisoned for smuggling drugs in 2011. She's left her job to campaign around New Zealand and connect with people who are trying to keep internet users safe. Sharon met with NetSafe New Zealand, one of few internet safety educators in the country. One of my concerns is really those that have been scammed, their family far and I don't even know, you know, they're living with that shame and they'll never get rid of that shame, you know, in terms of them being able to move on. Yeah. We talked very much about education being the key to, uh, you know, preventing further harm for people, really. You know, we talked about the, the volume of people that we deal with. And I think there's definitely a potential to work with Sharon around, you know, what she wants to do in terms of educating other people, for sure. NetSafe, it's Lee speaking. 8,000 Kiwis asked for help from NetSafe last year, reporting 400 different types of internet incidents, totalling $8 million in losses. So that's not an unusual scenario at all. They're overwhelmed but believe cybercrime is underreported. It does sound like a scam. I'll tell you right now that I think you're on absolutely the right track. We arrived here this morning you know, saying they've got 50 calls logged over the weekend. You know, 50 calls, that's 50 people that in some way or another, just over a weekend, are ringing up and reporting scams. Some victims don't report because they feel ashamed about what's happened and the public is unsympathetic. NetSafe is worried about the reaction to Sharon's efforts to raise awareness because in the past, other scam victims who've spoken out have been belittled by the public. The bad guys, they do this for a living. This is a business to them. This is a, a, an industry. And they come up with ways to part people from their money, to part people from their information. And so I think we, we need to get past the blaming kind of thing. We need to get past calling people stupid. We need to understand that in a situation where uh, a professional has extorted information, has extorted money from you, that, th that this is what they do for a living. And they're very good at doing it. The government is working on a cyber security strategy and police have employed more cybercrime officers. But it's difficult policing international crime syndicates targeting New Zealanders. We need to work internationally with other countries and other organisations to try and have an impact, to try and, you know, and prevent this kind of thing from happening, to try and find these people and, and, and bring them to justice, really. Becoming aware of what's happening at an international level, there's an element of being frightened because you know we're talking about sophisticated, potentially drug rings. Anthony de Melmont was also caught in a dating scam similar to Sharon and locked up. She hopes to meet with his whanau and offer them support. I know in sharing my story may help to lessen some of their pain, may help to give them some optimism that they will get through this. It may feel like at the time that they're not going to get through it. But, you know, trust me, if, you know, you've got the right support so you're able to talk to someone about it, you will get through it. Everyone we spoke to agrees so much more needs to be done to stop cybercrime. It comes down at the end of the day to all of us taking a role, so talking to our friends and family, uh, talking about the kind of things that do happen and trying to make people aware that, 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 that bad stuff can happen to them. What would your message be to the people that have been victims of scams? I mean, that's probably what makes me sad more than anything, really, Carmen, is that those that um, are perhaps feeling really lonely, very vulnerable, um, and not able to talk with anyone, which is probably one of the major drivers, as you can see now, I'm getting emotional myself. But, you know, it's because I've been there and um, I've come out the other side. That's not to say I still don't feel an element of shame. Yes, I do, um, but not like before. It's not weighing me down. I'm not living with it every minute. I'm moving on from it. I'm determined that it won't beat me. That's my message to people. Don't stay stuck there. Make contact with me. I'm happy for people to talk about this story. I'll pass no judgment. At least if you can tell someone what you've done or what's happened to you, that's a beginning to actually healing and getting through a process like this. And if you think you've been scammed, you can call the police or NetSafe on free phone 0508 NetSafe, or you can send Sharon an email, standuptoscams at gmail.com.